sounds that seem, you know, normal or not um, stressful for others are painful for me. The sounds of just traffic outside or construction or, you know, people chatting um, is exhausting for me to listen to all day. It's impacted me f forever since I can remember. One time when my son was in a grocery store and he was with myself and my husband and just some really loud, high piercing beeping sound and he could not cope at all. He hit the floor, he was crying. And so we left the groceries behind. My husband had to pick him up and he was about 12 years old. And I thought if he could have just, he could have just turned it off, turned it down, filtered it out. That might be a moment where he could have coped. Well, I would say the majority of people on the autism spectrum have some kind of sensory sensitivity. There are roughly 20,000 kids in the province of BC who are experiencing sound sensitivity. The existing solutions are not very effective in dealing with this situation. The reason for that is uh, decreased sound tolerance is a very subjective problem. And so while some people who are autistic might become distressed with hair dryers or vacuums or horns honking or sirens, um, there is a whole range of other things that could be problematic. We're using AI to monitor the environment for specific sounds that are distressing to the user. The system then masks or filters the sound through headphones. Right now, the system is running on a phone and is controlled by an app. The child or youth can select which sounds for the system to detect and choose whether to mask or filter the sound. AI helped us to come up with machines that's similar to our ears, identify these aversive situations. Most of the challenges related to that was deploying deep learning model in uh, real time in applications is a bit challenging. Today, when I tried the device again, it was pretty seamless. When it was canceling out the siren noises, it was replacing it pretty much right away with the sound of rain. I was looking forward to it turning on because of the sense of safety that the sound of rain gives me. Eventually, we think that if those children feel safe to go to these environments using these headphones, we can uh, slowly expose them to smaller dosages of these aversive sounds to increase their tolerance. And I think if I would have had this in my younger years, it would have it made things a lot easier for me. It would have made me be able to stay in certain situations that were really uncomfortable for longer because they would be comfortable with the use of the device. Yeah, it, it's going to be really great for a lot of people. If we have a device where people are able to differentiate which, which sounds are problematic, that could then mean that those individuals are able to attend school, they're able to attend university, they're able to go to a shopping mall, they're able to go to a grocery store, or to a restaurant. So as a mom and a behaviorist, I see technology coming to the lives of people with, with um, sound sensitivity, developmental disabilities, in a way like it never has before. I think this device, when it's made available, like on a mass scale to people across the country, um, could be life-changing. Well, KBHN has been a massive influence on the direction of the project in terms of believing in us. So they've been with us since the very beginning, and we wouldn't be here without Kids Brain Health Network. That's a fact. I clearly remember in early stages when Elena and I wanted to start the project, we didn't have uh, a lot of funding. And that was when Kids Brain Health Network support came. I received uh, a lot of opportunities in terms of training and uh, the courses that they provided to me. You know, the biggest thing that stands out for me is creating a more inclusive and um, understanding world for people like us. And work like your organization does is so needed.